Now, there's one other thing I want to mention is with our life cycle, certain energies are happening. So you're more kapha, you're going to have more you know, cold flus, different things like that. You know, and then as pitta, you're going to be more fiery. But still, that's good because you're watery. See what I'm saying? So kaphas are going to do really well during the pitta time of life. If I, do you see the, the concept? But if you're pitta and then you're going into pitta time of your life, you've got to pay much more attention to balancing your pitta. Now, again, I mentioned for this group and for m most people, I think the bhatta time of life is starting at the age of 45 more than 60. And there are certain changes. So I'm more of a kapha pitta. So what's happening is vata is kind of countering kapha, so pitta is starting to show up as a more driving force in my life, like a teenager type thing, or really people in their early 30s. Are you following what I just said? And once you understand, you can understand the forces that are going on. So I'm not really too bothered by vata because I'm primarily a kapha. But as the kapha is affected by the vata a little bit, it's bringing out pitta, which is kind of what's going on for me. So I'm just giving myself as an example of how it works. And you have to kind of flow with that energy. There is no one diet for everyone. There's no one diet the same for your whole life. We have to flow with the whole process. And we have to have the six food qualities, the six food tastes. That's what's really, really important in this picture. And that means we have to be a little flexible and not be fixed with a theory. This is, you're, you're, the, you're the book that's being studied. That's why I use the word trial and error. We have a rough idea, but trial and error is the key thing. So there are also times to eat. And there are cycles. And... The vata time of the day starts at 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. It's the time to do the breathing exercises and the yoga and the movement. Vata is a movement and breath. It's a good time to do that and meditate. Yeah. It's not an accident. They actually, they actually really understood these things. Okay? And, and incidentally, even though you'll hear today in Orivetta, 2,000 years ago, the ancient rishis were pretty much a life food diet. That's on the research. Ancient rishis, two, 3,000 years ago, were pretty much on a live food diet. And mostly a variety of leafy greens, nuts and seeds. That's what they had. But it was live food. I would say, based on my experience in India, because of all the parasites, because of all the things, that's probably not the best thing to do now. So if you're going to live in India, having lived there on and off for seven years, never got sick, never had dysentery, I balanced things. Okay? I also made sure I had really clean water. Very important. But by cooking your food, which is really all we had available, um, it's killing all the parasites. When people try to be live food in the middle of the jungle, they got dysentery, they got infections because... It's just in the hygiene of today in India, that's really what's going on. So we're always having to adjust to re the local realities, so to speak. Okay. So we have to, again, it's trial and error. We have to be very practical. You really need it. Wherever you are, clean water. Uh, clean water, in that case, would be boiled, but also filtered water. And you're going to do pretty well. Um, the iodine is really good. I didn't know about it when I was living there, but we know that iodine is the most powerful treatment for malaria. I'm working in Africa, and I'm working with a, a regional king. You know, he gets malaria. His secretary gets malaria, dies of it. It's like, uh, can you please take some iodine? 
mean, if we could afford it, we'd be giving iodine to everybody because that's the best thing. Where did I learn that? I learned it in India. And I, I found that, actually in 1918, that was before my time a little bit, um, that there were people who really, really had severe malaria and they kept having relapses and then they discovered iodine cured it. Because iodine actually is the, the, the best antiseptic for malaria, for viruses, for bacteria, for fungi. Now, it's a little side point, but I'm, I'm making a point about how we have to keep adjusting, okay? We have to be really much more flexible about the whole thing. So, at, nine, uh, at uh, 6 a.m., 10 a.m. is a time to eat just a little bit, okay, if you want. Um, and then the big time to eat is between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Why? It's the pitta time of the day. What's pitta? Fire. The power of digestion is the highest. Do you see the logic? I'm trying to get you to know, get a feeling for the logic of the situation. Wow, okay. That makes sense. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Fire time. Eat your bigger meal then. You never want to eat until you're full, but you want to eat your bigger meal. And then... People often have trouble between 2 and 6. They fall asleep or this happens. That, that's your hypoglycemia time, okay? And uh, it's good for some people until you treat your hypoglycemia, which is how I got started in a lot of this, um, is to have a little snack if you need at that time because there's a tendency for a blood sugar drop. You're more vata vulnerable because we now hit the second cycle of vata, 2 p.m., 6 p.m. Okay. And then after that, 6 p.m. Uh, to 10 p.m. is the kapha time. And that's why I don't recommend eating a lot at night because the digestion is really slow then. It really stresses you. And now, this is something that probably people who are pitta would know, but from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. is the pitta time. Now, if you miss that time, and you don't go to sleep, your pitta gets going, and a lot of pittas stay up at, to midnight. They're working. It's a great time. They're energized. How many people know what I'm talking about? I'm just curious. It's really true. So for pittas, I say try to get to bed by 10, or you're going to go into pitta, and you're going to not get enough sleep. And we know sleep is tremendously important. We need at least six, seven hours. Six hours, we think we're okay, but all the tests for cognition, memory, and so forth show if you're getting less than seven hours, your cognition memory goes down, even if it's subtle. Also, your coordination goes down. So now you see the cycle. Not just the cycle of the seasons, but the cycles of the day. What's the point? We want to be in harmony. We want to have optimal health, longevity. We need to be in harmony with the cycles of the day. We need to be in harmony with the cycles of the seasons. We need to be in harmony with the cycles of our life. And we need to work with what we call our doshas, our balance of kapha, pitta, and vata. So that's the, the, the really kind of key principles here. Um, in my book, Conscious Eating, I outline it pretty clearly. And I have a whole chapter on how to balance vata, since that's the biggest issue most people face.